All right, Algebra 1, I am back, baby. It's Miss Lucas in the house. I bet you didn't think I was going to give up the class this easily. I am here to teach you on the Ed Puzzle. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We skipped this one in the live session today, so I'm ready to do it with you. All right, step number one, is it in standard form? Remember these steps up here? Rearrange the equation to be in standard form. It must equal zero. What do you think? Is this standard form? I hope you said yes, and I agree with you. Step number two, factor out a GCF. So, does it have a GCF? What's the largest number that can go into 6, 5, and 7? Is there a GCF? What do you guys think? There is no GCF. There's not a number that can go into 6, 5, and 7. So since there's no GCF, that means we need to do our x factoring with our MDRK, right? So let me go ahead and write out. All right, and then on top of that, I also need to write the A, the B, and the C. All right, so you guys are really, really good at identifying the A, B, and C at this point, right? The A is 6, the B is 5, and the C is 7, and they're all positive numbers. All right, step number one is going to be multiply A times C. So that means 6 times 7. So 6 times 7 is going to give me 42. And I know I'm going to drop that into the top of my x. A positive 42 up here. All right, we know b goes on the bottom. b stands for bottom, so I'm going to put positive 5 down here. All right, so I have a positive 42 and a positive 5. I want you guys to go ahead and work your magic and come up with the two numbers that you think multiply to get positive 42 and sum to get positive 5. I'll give you a minute to do that. I hope you didn't take too long because I hope I didn't waste any of your time here, but I don't think anybody could find any numbers that multiply to get 42 and add to get 5. Now, I confirmed this in my calculator. I started off, I did 42 divided by 2. So I have 2 and 21. I know that won't add to be 5, so I did 42 divided by 3, so 3 and 14, well that will not add to be 5, right? So I'll keep going, decimal won't work, and I'm just going in order, so I'm at 6 now, and I get 6 and 7, that won't add to be 5. And I'm just skipping over the ones that have decimals, right? Oh, and now I'm back to where I started with the 14 and the 3. So these are my only sets of factors for 42, and none of them are going to add up to be 5, right? 2 plus 21 is 23. 3 plus 14 is going to be 17, and 6 plus 7 is going to be 13. So none of the factors work. So what does that mean? It means this is not factorable. Oh my gosh, can your teacher spell? Factorable, not factorable, no solutions. Now I want to pull this up on Desmos so we can confirm. Remember, solutions for a parabola or a quadratic are where they hit the x-axis, right? We talked about that at the beginning. So we said that they can either have two solutions, one solution, or no solution, right? And a no solution would be if the quadratic doesn't hit the x-axis at all. So that must be happening here, but I want to confirm it in Desmos. All right, so... Looking at Desmos, I put in the equation, 6x squared plus 5x plus 7, and you'll see that it does not touch the x-axis. The x-axis is here, and the lowest point of that quadratic is above the x-axis. So, no solution, this is not factorable. Sorry, tricked you, but at least you got some practice at finding factors, so it's definitely not wasted. All right, now let's go have some fun on the very last page with the word problems. All right, so here we are. We've got five word problems. Hang with me. It won't be that bad. All right, example number one. A rectangular picture has a width that is two-thirds its length, and the picture has an area of 294 square inches. 
what are the dimensions of the picture? First thing I want you to do is draw the picture so we can start labeling it. All right. All right, that was supposed to be a rectangle. It didn't turn out that way. Oh, well, I'm not an artist. All right, a, rectangular, a rectangle has a width that is two-thirds of its length, right? So let's say the, I'll use capital L for length. Now, I want to write all of this in one variable because I can, and that way I can solve it. So the variable I've chosen is L, and L stands for length. Now, I can write W for width, but that will give me two variables, and then I won't be able to solve the quadratic because I need the quadratic in one variable only. So it's really important that we use one variable only with these problems. That way we can solve them, right? All right, so looking at this, it tells us that the width is two-thirds its length. So uh, that's just going to be multiplication. I'm going to take two-thirds... I'm going to multiply it times L. So 2 thirds L is my width. So you see how I wrote the dimensions in the same variable because they told me that the width is 2 thirds of its length, right? All right, now um, it gives me the area of 294. To find area, we do multiplication. We do length times width, right? So all I'm going to do here is L times 2 thirds L is equal to 294, the area. So that's the same thing as length times width is equal to area. I just plugged it into my little equation that we should know for area of a rectangle. All right, so when I multiply this out, and I'm going to start my work over here, 1 times 2 thirds is just going to give me 2 thirds. And then L times L is going to give me L squared. All right, I hate fractions. I'm sure you do too. I want to get rid of them, and there's an easy way to get rid of them. We talked about it at the beginning of fall semester. It's multiplying by the reciprocal. Do we remember reciprocals? It's where we flip the fraction. I can get rid of the fraction by multiplying both sides by the reciprocal. Watch out. It will help us get rid of it. So the reciprocal of 2 over 3 is 3 over 2. All right. If I have something on the top of the fraction and the bottom, it cancels out because 3 divided by 3 is 1, and I don't need to write 1 as a coefficient. 2 divided by 2 is 1, so that just cancels out to 1. So that's the same thing as 1L squared. All right, now let's figure out the other side. I'll go to Desmos. I'm going to do 294 times 2 over 3 and I end up getting 196. All right. So remember my first step was to get it in standard form, right? Remember my standard form is a squared plus b at, a squared at, oh my gosh, why don't I just write it? ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So, I need this to equal 0, so I should subtract 196 on both sides. This will obviously cancel out to 0 on the right-hand side. On the left-hand side, these are not like terms. So, I'm going to have to write it as L squared minus 196. So, L squared minus 196 is equal to 0. This should start to look familiar to you. I see only two terms, the middle term is missing, and there's a subtraction sign. What does that make you think of? Something that we covered earlier. A difference of two squares, right? So let's see if these are two perfect squares. I know L squared is a perfect square because of the squared. Not a joke. Let's see if 196 is a perfect square. And it is. The square root is 14. So I know I can skip do my difference of squares, my difference of squares shortcut. I have two parentheses, a plus and a minus, and all I'm going to do is put the square root of each term in these binomials. So I know the square root of L squared is just going to give me L. And then we just put in the calculator that the square root of 196 is 14, so that's going to be my other term. 
All right, so I factor, I'm good. But the last thing I need to do is set both of these factors equal to zero. I'm running out of room, so I'm gonna do it right here. L plus 14 is equal to zero, and L minus 14 is equal to zero. All right, now these are two quick one-step equations like we covered last semester. So I know that to solve for L, I'm gonna do the opposite. So since it's a plus 14, I'm gonna subtract 14 on both sides. So I get L is equal to negative 14 for one of my solutions. And I'm gonna add 14 on both of these sides. So I'm gonna get L is equal to 14 as my second solution. I can confirm that in Desmos, and you know I will. So let me go ahead and put in, I'm gonna use X just because that's the variable we use in Desmos, but you guys know it's L. So L squared minus 196. All right, looks like we do have two solutions, negative 14 and positive 14. All right, so we're doing it right. But we're talking about a rectangular picture frame, and we want to know the dimensions of the picture. Have you ever seen a picture frame with a negative width or a negative length? I have not either. That means I must eliminate my negative answer because that answer doesn't exist in the context of the problem. All right, so I know that L is equal to 14, 14 what? Square inches, not square inches, 14 inches. So my L is equal to 14 inches. What is my width equal to? Well, I know that it's two thirds of the length, right? So I'm just gonna plug 14 in for L. And I'm gonna just, again, Desmos, two over three times 14. Oh, well that's ugly. Oops, we'll do 14 times two, so 28 over three. 28 over three, which rounds to 9.33 inches. All right, so that's my answer right there, my dimensions, 14 by 9.33 inches. Those are the dimensions of my picture frame. All right, you guys are doing well. Let's keep it moving. Number two. A pool measuring 5 by 10 meters this is my fancy pool 5 by 10 meters uh, we'll have a walkway around it all right let me draw a walkway here's a person walking in it all right um, it's going to have a uniform width, and that uniform means all the same. So my width is the same all the way around. It doesn't change. So my width is the same. It's the same here, there, there. The area covered by the pool and the walkway, so the total area is equal to 126 meters squared. What is the width of the walkway? All right, well, we know in the last question we set up length times width, right, to be able to get the area. So I can do uh, some quick expressions to get the, the big length and the big width, right? So I know from here to here is five. That's what they told us, the dimensions of the pool was five. I know I have width, the width here and the width here, right? So this is actually gonna give me five plus two W. If I want the full length of this walkway from here to here, it's going to be the five right here plus this W and this W for the width of the walkway. So I end up with five plus two W is my total big width. We can do the same thing over here. It's gonna be 10 plus two W. Remember the length of the pool is 10. And then I have a width right there and a width right there that I need to add to get the total walkway width, right? So I've got my two binomials. I know that when I multiply them together, I'm going to get 126. So I can go ahead and set this up. All 
All right. I know um, Ms. Hawkins was using FOIL method. I want to use box method so you guys can remember how to do that as well. All right. I'm going to put the first binomial expression up here, 5 and 2w, and then I'm going to put 10 and 2w right here. Remember, we just multiply whatever's above and to the left. So 10 times 5 is 50. 10 times 2w is going to give me 20w. 5 times 2w is 10w. And then 2w times 2w gives me 4w squared. All right. I know I have like terms here with the 10w and the 20w. I'm going to go ahead and write them all out, and I'm going to start getting it into standard form because I know my w squared has to come first, right? So 4w squared plus 30w, this 10 and this 20 added together, plus 50 is going to equal my total area of 126. All right, we're very close. We're almost in standard form. The last thing I need to do is get this equal to zero. So that means I need to subtract 126 on both sides. I lined it up under the 50 because they're like terms. All right, so let me go ahead and do my 50 minus 126. Right here, this is what I'm doing, 50 minus 126, and I get minus 76 equals 0, because those cancel out. All right, so now that I'm in standard form, my second step is to figure out a GCF. Well, let's try 4 and see if 4 can factor out. So if I do 30 divided by 4, do I get an even number? Nope. Let's try 2, see if we can factor out a 2. factor out of 2. Each of these are divisible by 2 evenly. So it's going to leave me with 2w squared plus 15w plus 30w squared plus 48 equals 0. All I did was divide each of these terms by 2. Alright, I'm ready to label my a, my b, and my c. And we're just looking at this trinomial right here. So my a is 2, my b is 15, and my c is negative 38. So we got our m, d, r, k. m is for multiply. I multiply a times c. So I'm going to do 2 times negative 38, and I'm going to get negative 76. I put that up top. B goes in the bottom, so a positive 15 is on the bottom. All right, spend some time finding some factors to solve this X puzzle. Remember, they need to multiply to get negative 76 and add to get 15. Okay, I stopped right here. All I did was I started off with dividing 76 by 2 to see my two factors. And I kept going until I saw something that could work, 4 and 19. So if I did 4 times 19, I end up with 76. I know one of these numbers has to be negative to get my negative 76. So which one would have to be negative to get me a positive 15? All right, I hope you said negative 4. A negative 4 plus 19 is going to give me 15. So I've got negative 4 and a positive 19. All right, we're not going to go through this area three example problem, so I'm going to use the rest of the space down here. All right, so remember, once we get here, we're going to write out our temporary factors. They're temporary because I have to go through the rest of the MDRK protocol. All right, so I got x minus 4 and x plus 19. All right, so we did the M of MDRK, which was multiply. So let's do the D. Remember the D means divide by A. I gotta divide these temporary factors by A. So I look back up and my A is two. So I'm gonna divide both of these by two. Negative four divided by negative two gives me a negative two. 
Now I'm stuck here because two doesn't go in evenly to 19. All right, so I did the D. That brings me down to R, which is reduce the fraction. I can't reduce that anymore, right? Because two can't go into 19. So I'm going to cross out R. So my last step is to kick. We're going to kick the coefficient to the front. All right. So x minus 2 and 2x plus 19. And we also can't forget about the GCF that we took out at the very beginning, 2. All right, so here are all my factors. I've got 2 times x minus 2 times 2x plus 19. All right. Step to solve is to take these two factors and set them equal to 0. So I've got x minus 2 is equal to 0, and 2x plus 19 is equal to 0. So now I've just got a quick little solution. These are This is a one-step equation and a two-step equation. So I'm going to add 2 to both sides on this first one to get x by itself. So my first answer is x equals 2. The next one I subtract 19 on both sides, and then I need to divide both sides by the coefficient. So I'm left with x is equal to negative 19 over 2. All right, so here are my two answers. Let's go ahead and check them on Desmos. Okay, so I put our original quadratic equation into Desmos already, this 4x squared plus 30w minus 76. And if I hover over the two x-intercepts, because those are the solutions, I get negative 9.5. That's our negative 19 divided by 2. And I have positive 2. So our two solutions work. Nice job. Um, I need to eliminate one of them, right? Because we're talking about a width of a walkway. So which one is my only possible answer? 2 or negative 19 over 2? All right, I hope you said 2 is my only possible answer because I can't have a negative walkway. That would be pretty crazy. So my final answer is the width is equal to 2 meters. Now, I know that was a lot, but look, isn't this beautiful? And aren't you very proud of yourself? Look at all we did. We started off with some artwork. We did some multiplication, X factoring. I am very extremely proud of you. Hope you're proud of yourself, too, which is why are we going to end this now with 22 minutes. All right, let me know or let Ms. Hawkins know if you have any questions. And that's about it. See you guys soon.